Okay, here's the second video. This one is from question number eight to about fifteen. Um, right. For me, this question number eight is unbelievably easy. But when you first see it, you look at all those numbers and you think, oh, good God, it's going to be horrible. All they're trying to test is whether you know what the components of aggregate demand are. And as you know, with this one, aggregate demand equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Now, the important thing here is that imports... Imports are a what's that? Imports are a minus on aggregate demand. So whatever happens with the imports, it's going to be a minus. That's the key point. Okay, so let's go through each one. First of all, consumer expenditure that has gone down by ten million. So already we've got minus ten. That's what I write on the side. Then government expenditure has gone down by five. So we've got another minus five. Then we've got um, investment expenditures gone. What's it done? It's gone down by 5 as well. There we are. So it's gone down by 5. So already we're at minus 20. Exports have gone up by 10. So we've got a... We've got to have a plus 10 there. Plus imports have gone up by 5. Now by imports going up, that's actually bad for our economy. So you count it as a minus 5. Lots of people will just count that as a plus 5 and they'll be wrong. So if you put... Right, now you've got those numbers. It becomes really easy. You've Let's do all the minuses at once, then do the plus bit at the end, that's easiest. Minus 10, minus 5 is minus 15. Minus another 5 is minus 20. Minus another 5 is minus 25. Plus 10 is minus 15. So the answer is B. Right, this question's trying to scare you, because as you can see, there's um, a short run aggregate supply, a long run aggregate supply shift, and there's an AD line in there. And what it's trying to ask you to do is go from, let's get a different colour in here, is go from point E to point F. Now, for it to go to point E to point F, as you can see, LRAS would have to go that way to LRAS2, and SRAS would have to go that way to SRAS2. OK, so both LRAS and SRAS are going down. Now, as we know, anything that would call LRAS to go down would be a change in um, Q squared cell. And anything that would cause SRAS to go down would be anything that increases a firm's cost of production. Now, what makes this hard, kind of, is that not often do you see LRAS going down. Normally, Q2 cell is basically the economy getting bigger but something must have happened to the economy to make it smaller right so we're looking for which of these ones make any sense now first of all i'm going to go for the ones that don't make any sense um no i'm not i'm just going to go through it right an increase in labor productivity and wage rates now if there was an increase in labor productivity these lines would be going the other way they'd be actually increasing so we know that is wrong change color um a decrease in the underlying trend rate of growth okay well that makes sense because that means if, if the trend rate of growth is going down that would be this bit, so we've already got one of them right. And an increase in the world commodity prices. If world commodity prices went up, then firms' cost of production would increase, and that would cause this shift. So we've got our two shifts, and it's got to be that one. Just to make sure, a decrease in government expenditure, we know that's wrong because that would shift AD, so that's stupid. And a fall in productivity, fine, that works. And an increase in world commodity prices. Oh, the reason why this one doesn't work is a fall in productivity. Oh, Hmm. I'm tempted by D. Why is D wrong? Um, fall in productivity. I think a fall in productivity would actually affect the SRAS curve. So that is why uh, I'm between B and D. But it's definitely B. So um, that's how we look. Okay, after looking at this one, um, I went to a website, tried to call my mum, but basically the... Um, a fall in productivity wouldn't cause the LRAS to go inwards. It um, it wouldn't make our it wouldn't actually make our economy shrink. And um, I think that's the general idea. I'm not particularly happy about that. But basically, in this case, they're saying a fall in productivity would actually mean that firms would it would affect the SRAS rather than the LRAS. So this part D, the reason why part D is wrong, is because it's saying two factors that would affect SRAS, and they haven't got any factors that would make LRAS go inwards. So it's got to be part B. But I'm sorry for being vague on that, because sometimes an increase in productivity can actually call the LRAS to go to the right. Um, but that is our one quietly dodgy one, so, um, sorry. Right, this one's too easy, um, so I'll do it very quickly. 
Uh, structural unemployment, as you know, is when there's been a mismatch of um, between skills um, in the economy that's needed and the skills that labourers have got. Um, now let's go through the ones. Labour being temporarily unemployed when moving between jobs, that's definitely wrong because that is frictional unemployment. Uh, fluctuations in the level of aggregate demand, anything where AD is too low or anything like that would be to do with cyclical unemployment, so it can't be that one. The seasonal nature of certain occupations, we know that is, again, seasonal unemployment. I can't spell seasonal. See, seasonal. Yeah, um, seasonal unemployment, so it's not that. And then finally, long-term changes in the pattern of demand for the products in particular industries. Because it's a change in demand for an industry, that means there's not going to be any more demand for their sort of skill. So therefore, they won't have the right skills for another sort of industry. That's why it's structural unemployment. Right, um, this question again is a nice easy one. Um, you're looking for anything that causes demand pull inflation. Now we know demand pull inflation is when there's too much demand in the economy and not enough supply. So let's look for this. Um, I don't know why I've done an arrow there, but I have. So, A, a decrease in the rate of productivity growth. Um, no. <laughs> if there's a decrease in the rate of productivity growth, that could actually cause a firm's supply costs to go up. So arguably, and also it's wrong, a decrease in the rate, because actually it can, it's rubbish. It's the worst answer ever. If you ever put that, you're wrong. Right? There's two reasons why you'd be wrong. One, a decrease in the rate of productivity growth. So that means productivity growth could still be rising, just at a lower rate. That's one reason why it's stupid. And secondly, the reason why it's stupid is because um, that would affect SRAS, which would be to do with cost push. So it's stupid. The next one, a positive output gap. Now we know with a positive output gap, this is when it's this bit here, when the economy is um, growing bigger than the um, supply can keep up. So again, on a uh, PPF, the economy would be out here. As you, know, as you can see here, there's too much demand in the economy and not enough supply. This is the amount that can be supplied, this is the amount that's being demanded. So, it's got to be B. Um, just to go through the next ones really quickly. C, as soon as you say an increase in the value of the exchange rate, you'd write spice, strong pound, imports, cheap, exports, dear. Now you know this is wrong because imports cheap would have actually reduced costs for a firm. Um, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't cause any sort of inflation anyway. It's, it's stupid. Um, and also, with exports dear being dear, there'd be less demand for our goods, so actually AD would be going down. And finally, D, an increase in the rate of interest would cause um, inflation to go down. So it can't be that one. It can't be that one. It's got to be B. OK, this one's so easy. I'm not going to waste your time on it. We know the claimant count is something to do with unemployment, so the answer is C. Done. Just to add something else, potentially, the other me measure of unemployment is the ILO, or the Labour Force Survey. This question, uh, question number 13, is just a ridiculous easy one. Like, if you can't do this one, all you'd know is you don't know all your different types of unemployment. So, let's go through the two types. It says, Tony is unemployed because the textiles industry in which he used to work declined in the face of competition. So that means that he, ha and he hasn't got the right skills. So quite clearly, he is structural. So it can only be A or B. C and uh, D are gone already. He hasn't got the right skills to transfer. Right, it says, um, I'm going to say a rush. I think so. Anyway, he rushes unemployed because the hotel in which he works employs fewer people during the winter months. That is obviously um, seasonal. So the only answer it can be is B. Can't be A because cyclical would, be, would have been to do with demand. Um, and as we know, frictional is when you're in between jobs. Okay, so that's an easy one. The answer is B. Okay, this is, this is a really easy one. Um, when they have four diagrams like this, as long as you understand um, the main things that affect AD short run AS and long run AS, it should be fairly easy. Now this one's only talking about AD and SRAS. Now, it says which one best illustrates the benefits to the economy from an increase in productivity? Now you know an increase in productivity is all about SRAS because it affects a firm's cost of production. If um, workers are more productive, their cost of production will go down because obviously they'd need less uh, workers, wouldn't they? So, um, which one would make sense? Straight away it can't be AD there and it can't be AD. So it's got to be either B or C. We need the one where cost of production has gone down because it's been more produ productive. So the firm's going to produce more. So the one where they produce more is C because this is going to the left, which is less. So that's wrong. So the answer is C. Right, with this one, it's going to be the last one, by the way, for a while because I've, I've, I've had my film. Um, this one is actually quite hard, I think. I think they've made it fairly hard. You think, you think it's easy, but then, I don't know. Right, so... 
it's an improvement in the economy's underlying trend rate of growth. Now, when the underlying trend rate of growth is when the LARIS line goes out like this, or the sorry, the ARS line goes out like this. So it's like when there's been sorry economic growth. Now, not all these factors, like for example, tax rates on income, that's going to affect AD, and interest rates on borrowing, that's also going to affect AD. But with both these things, if AD was to increase, um, I don't know what I'm doing here, but that looks terrible. Um, right, if AD was to increase, um, then there might be a accelerator process. Still can't spell accelerator, I'm really sorry. There might be an accelerator process which might lead to this. So, basically we need both of these AD to go up for both of these. And innovation, if there's more innovation, then there'll be more supply in the economy, that's the idea. So if innovation goes up, then that'll be, um, that will cause this to happen. So we need this to go up as well. So, which one of these ones have AD going up? Tax rates on income can't be right, and B can't be right. So, because that'd be, if tax rates go up, then AD would go down. So it can only be C or D. The rate of innovation has to be increasing, so now it actually can only be C. But just to make sure, if interest rates on borrowing decreased, people would spend more money. This would mean AD, there'd be more AD in the economy, which could cause an accelerator effect, causing firms to invest more, which is why this would happen. So, the answer is C. Um, there we are.